So I'm just going to store a Zeppelin camera right here. And there's just a couple of things you have to uh, keep in mind for uh, shadows and, and, and lights overall. And here on the render settings, you have BPR shadow. And basically, if I do a render now, and it's really dark in there, but if I render this, you're going to see that the shadows are very hard and, and, and very harsh. So the angle actually controls that. If I put like 30 and an angle, you're going to see it's, it's going to soften those shadows a little bit. And yeah, as more, if your angle is, is if you have a lot of, a big value on an angle, you have to kind of increase your ray samples. So you just get more resolution in those shadows and it's going to slow down a little bit your ring, or the render. I'm just going to keep it like this because we want it to be fast at this time. So every time you press render or shift R, you're going to create all those uh, render passes, which is awesome from ZBrush. And you can just export it by clicking on shader. And I'm just going to export this real quick. So we have uh, ZDev, Shadow Pass, and a mask. And I can also do uh, occlusion and a subsurface just by turning on those options. I'm not changing anything at this point. So you can see at the first, you can see my light right here in the corner. The first render that I did was a little more like a front light. And I like to do one very frontal like this. And this is going to take a little bit more time because of the ambient occlusion and the SSS. But again, it's nothing compared to. Yes. Okay, right here, we got a question. Thank you. Uh, oh. I just did the ambient occlusion and the SSS. I can just turn them off because they are going to be the same for every single render. So I'm just going to do one side view like this. And every time I'm doing those extra ones now, I'm only exporting the shaded version. I'm not exporting all those passes again. So I'm just going to put two. I'm just going to do one for the other side. And again, now that ZBrush is uh, releasing the, with a the key shot and a lot of the key, sh key shot options is awesome. I, I'm sure I'm going to see a lot of cool stuff. But ZBrush is still have a, an awesome uh, render tools that we can use. And one thing about that we have to be careful is just if you want to work as a character artist, your model uh, needs to be 100%. And that's why you have to present. That's your final. I mean, if you work as a concept artist or as a character concept, a character 3D concept, you don't have to worry too much about that. Your final image is going to be very important for it. But if you want to work as a character artist in a game studio, your portfolio needs to have basically characters on it, not beautiful lightings and, and that kind of stuff. So ZBrush still has amazing tools to actually uh, show your work. So you just got to keep an, uh, this is why I'm, I'm, I'm showing you guys this. And that's basically what I use for almost all my personal projects. So if you click on the light, it's actually bringing uh, the light back. And if you click it again, it's just coming to the front. Oh, there you go. So now I can do backlights. I'm just going to do one top, a top backlight. And again, this is very important if you have references, because you can probably recreate the image that you like or a, fo uh, a photo that you like. But right now, I'm just going to do the standard, uh, the thing that's the first thing that you learn when you're lighting is just the basically three point lights, uh, backlights, red, blue, that basic stuff. So you can see I'm, I'm using the basic material for ev all the passes. And I like to use a uh, reflected map to create a spec. And I'm just going to do one because we don't have time. And this is going to create my specular map. I'm just going to export that and quickly to Photoshop. I'm just copy and paste everything into one image, all right. And then if we organize this, so we have all the lights. And by doing this, you, you saw that I'm, I did like uh, both side lights. And I can have more control about the, the final image like that. So I have 
ambient occlusion, Z depth, mask, let me just take this to the top, uh, SSS, shadow pass, backlight, 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 the side light, other side light, and then our main light right here. I don't know what happened with my spec pass. Can I open that? There you go. Let me put that to the top. There you go. So basically, usually you can mix the these lights just a little closer and control your light like this with the opacity if you want to. Or you can use it as a screen mode and have it add just add it to the, the main light. So I'm just gonna use as a normal and I'm gonna blend it in just a little bit so we get the nice blend between all the lights and create that global illuminational feel that we got from other softwares. And then we bring this backlight, this top light, I'm just gonna use it as a screen mode and you can see I can change the intensity, I can change the levels and it's good to keep that very organized but again, we don't have time. I'm just gonna bump that guy. And then we'll bring in the second backlight. And we're just gonna crank those values up. And again, I can change the color. And that's why I keep everything very simple because I can do pretty much everything into Photoshop. And again, it's not working. can change the color in here. I want like a blue color like this. All right, our second spec, our second backlight, our third backlight actually. That side, oh, why is this not working? Shortcuts. Make it blue and a screen mode. I'm just gonna add that backlight in. And I can crank up those values. And then that's when everything starts to fall into place. We got the shadow as a multiply. There you go. And we got the SSS. And the way you can use these, we can change those values just to get some of the edges. And we can colorize just like this. And we can apply as a screen mode to the edges. Like that. And then we got Z-Depth, we got ambient occlusion, and we can tint the ambient occlusion a little bit too. So you get that skin feel and more purple-ish. As a multiply. Wait, what? Oh, it's got the Z-Depth in it. All right. It's very dark in the screen, but anyways. And then we got the spec that we can, again, change those values as, as, as we want and use it as a screen mode and all the specs. And then we can mask it, paint that mask in. Like this. Especially in the eyes, we can do something for the eyes. And then we can grab this mask right here and then put everything into a group and use it as a mask. Paste that guy in. There you go. And if you want to paint a background, oops. Sinking. Why am I using the mouse? <laughs> there you go. And then, since we have everything in layers and everything is working and additive and screen, I can go back there and actually tweak those lights and add it more to the side. Or if I want to bring it back to the other side, everything is just right there. 
and if I want to create more lights and add it on top, I can always go back there and add more stuff to it. And that's time. That's it. Everyone, wrap.